All right, so now let's let's talk about uh, the whole idea of communication between neurons. Um, we've looked at kind of the the meta picture, if you will, of of uh, how neurons actually operate. But how do they communicate with one another? And we're going to get into a little bit more detail in understanding that. The key to keep in mind um, is is uh, something that I mentioned before, and that's this synaptic. Um, well, I'm having a tough time with my words here. Synaptic uh, cleft or synapse, and the the synaptic cleft, as as I've already mentioned, is right here, and you see very clearly the uh, gap that exists uh, between um, between the end of the the end of the um, axon and the dendrite. So um, what's going this direction down here is is the dendrite it's receiving and what you're seeing up above up here is the axon and the axon's terminal branches that we were looking at. Um, essentially once the action potential begins its way down the axon and then um, uh, is triggered within the uh, cell body itself. Uh, when the the stimulation comes down this axon, then what's released um, is is essentially uh, the key uh, transmission uh, component, and it's neurotransmitters, which you know by its nature um, it makes complete sense it's the, the the things that are transmitted neurologically and they are specific substances that we have identified uh, that uh, act to excite and start the uh, action that occurs down in this neck of the woods so essentially when we get to the very bottom down here um, where the signal actually comes in um, it releases these uh, neurotransmitters across this this uh, cleft down here, and it's received in the um, in the dendrite by the neurotransmitters, which are these small uh, green uh, balls or small pellets, and those essentially what you're describing is um, the neurotransmitters and, and the action potential when it reaches the end. There is also a process then that um, continues so that it, it restores um, order, if you will. Uh, and that, that uh, process is something that we call reuptake. And so essentially, the neurotransmitters uh, go into the, the, the gap. And once they, they uh, stimulate the other side of the um, St stimulate the the next dendrite, then they are taken back in, um, back into the uh, receptacles that are up in this, uh, up in the end up here of the uh, uh, axon, taken back in and recycled and um, to be used again, and so uh, in a lot of ways this system. Uh, is uh, the ultimate recycling machine, if you will. Um, the transmitters are, are um, sent across the gap, they, uh, they do their job, and then they are essentially taken back up. Um, this process, this reuptake process, we will see at a later point in time in some drugs that actually block reuptake so that the um, transmitter, the neurotransmitter, is in the gap longer and therefore it uh, stimulates the uh, the actual signal that much longer so uh, this is a key to keep in mind so that when we come back to it you'll understand because like I said there are some drugs uh, we refer to them as SSRI I won't um, describe the SS part just yet but RI is reuptake inhibitor and that that is essentially tells you just exactly where we're actually going to be um, focusing our efforts with the particular drug that we're going to be using. So that's the process. Uh, the the uh, uh, the action potential flows down the axon. 
comes into the actual cell body and is processed um, and it's taken um, uh, in this area up here is where the axon meets with the dendrite the neurotransmitters flow across the synaptic gap they uh, stimulate the dendrite in this area and then when that's all finished then the neurotransmitters are taken back up into the axon the terminal bud at the end of the axon ready to be released again with whatever the stimulation is all right, so I want to I want to spend a little time talking about neurotransmitters themselves, since they really are the um, the uh, workhorse that spins and sends out uh, throughout the system. And essentially, when you break down, um, like we already did, uh, uh, the process itself, um, neurotransmitters are carrying the message that uh, from sending neuron across the synapse of the receptor sites and this is the area which all of that is occurring and specific neurons um, congregate and in your book you we have one called serotonin uh, which uh, is largely responsible um, for uh, mood and and uh, stability of mood and um, uh, the the nature of of uh, our our uh, regulation of mood Another uh, neurotransmitter which we often talk about um, is dopamine and it has a variety of impacts within our system itself um, and they uh, the the uh, whole idea of dopamine um, is uh, how it operates within our system and a lot of times dopamine serotonin and uh, what we refer to as norepinephrine Nephrine are three major players in the landscape of neurotransmitters, particularly in, in um, uh, mental health. Now, there are other neurotransmitters. Acetylcholine, we refer to that as ACH, um, which is, uh, uh, actually, I should probably uh, emphasize that. And that has, that impacts the um, uh, with learning and memory it also has impact with uh, the motor neurons and skeletal muscles uh, there is an actual uh, table in your book that gives you an idea of how each of these neurotransmitters actually operate um, dopamine has to do with movement learning and and uh, attention and emotion acetylcholine I already mentioned the uh, muscle action uh, which is part of that um, serotonin uh, affecting mood, hunger, sleep. Uh, norepinephrine, this one here, uh, affects uh, the alertness and arousal. Um, interestingly enough, norepinephrine actually has a complement to it, and usually we uh, refer to that as um, uh, as epinephrine. And you might recognize that if you have a um, uh, a bee sting allergy or something like that we call it an EpiPen well it's filled with epinephrine you might uh, have been listening to Gray's Anatomy and listen to um, an epinephrine shot to, to uh, shock a heart back into but epinephrine mirrors the effects of norepinephrine and norepinephrine has to do with arousal uh, and alertness uh, a lot of times what you see uh, when somebody gets very frightened um, and they uh, freeze. Uh, norepinephrine oftentimes plays that part. Epinephrine, uh, the other word that we usually use to describe epinephrine is adrenaline um, and it it increases energy and uh, and strength and so forth. Um, the last one, GABA, G-A-B-A, um, is, is a fairly complex uh, neurotransmitter and um, GABA, uh, gamma aminobutyric acid, um, is an inhibitory. It inhibits the effects of, of uh, some of the other um, neurotransmitters. Um, and then the last one is glutamate. And um, these, these all uh, function in a variety of ways. Glutamate is an excitatory um, 
neurotransmitter. In other words, it accentuates the signal uh, of um, some of these other transmitters and even within the, s the system itself. Uh, oversupply, for example, uh, sometimes will lead to uh, some, uh, what we found with people that suffer from migraines, a lot of times they have a overabundance of this particular neuro neurotransmitter in their, in their um, uh, motor, uh, in the muscles around the head, for example. So those are a few of them. Neurotransmitters are really the, the uh, uh, um, material that that's send off and create the signals and make them all happen. The last thing I want to mention to you when we're talking about neurotransmitters um, is that uh, morphine, everybody knows morphine, it's a great painkiller, uh, whoops, um, it's a, it's known for its um, for its uh, painkilling um, capacity uh, and we one of the things you wonder about is that when a drug has a particular effect rx is is a short term for drug when it has an effect you also have you always have to ask why i mean how does it have the effect that it does and usually the the answer lies in the fact that we have uh, similar substances within our body that mimic or that the drug mimics uh, substances. And so um, you may have heard of this word, endorphins, and essentially uh, morphine um, mimics the effect of a naturally occurring painkiller called endorphins. Uh, essentially, it's the combination of two words, endogenous, which is internally occurring morphine and that's how we came by the word endorphins usually um, released when we're under a great deal of stress uh, stress in the sense of the runner's high uh, is usually what's referred to as, as uh, an endorphin high and that's part of the whole process when we're talking about um, neurotransmitters